Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, it might be a bit of a shorter one, but I'm just going to go through some tips and some information about the extra reading section for the paper three essay for AQA A-level biology, which is something that you will need to get the higher marks in the essay. So, so why might extra reading be necessary? So extra reading, is required to get above 23 out of 25 marks in the essay so yeah as you will hopefully know the essay is out of 25 marks and to get either 24 or 25 marks you have to show evidence of reading beyond specification requirements now, this is information that is not in the specification so it is really important to make sure you know the specification which I explained the importance of in my last video, which is AQA biology exam hacks, which I will put a link to in the corner. There are some things that are really, really important to consider. So the content of your extra reading in your essay has to be of at least an A-level standard. So it can't be something that uh, the regular person who hasn't studied A-level biology would understand. So that's sort of something that's really important because it won't be counted as extra reading if it's, you know, something that's really, really simple. Something else that is quite important to consider as well is if the extra reading is really worth doing for the sake of a couple of extra marks, because, yeah, as I said, to, it's only to get 24 or 25 marks. So I would say it's only worth doing if you're aiming for that A star grade, since it's only a couple of extra marks and it's not really worth going to the trouble of doing it just for those marks if you're not aiming for that A star grade. So something else that's really important is that the extra reading and the rest of your essay still has to be synoptic and relevant to the question. So synoptic, that just means the content of your essay covers a wide range of topics across the whole course, and it has to be relevant to the question. So for example, if you, in your essay, you have some really, really good extra reading, but the other content of your, main content of your essay was not synoptic or relevant to the question, you wouldn't get that top mark. So people are often confused of how to go about extra reading, where to look, or how much extra reading to do. So one of my top tips is for each topic. So go through each individual topic and then look up to so research and write down maybe a couple of pieces of extra reading per topic. Then create flashcards based on those topics. So it doesn't have to be something really long for each topic. It just has to be maybe something and then a short explanation. So for the flashcards, remember to use your active recall and spaced repetition, like I mentioned in my exam hacks video. Another top tip here is to choose a topic for your extra reading that can link across multiple themes, because this will help in making your essay synopt synoptic as well. Um, a good example of this is using the example of antibiotic resistance because that covers the topics of evolution because obviously the anti antibiotic resistant bacteria will have a selective advantage so um, you know they will be more likely to survive and reproduce so evolution will be driven in their favor um, the immune system so that's part of year one as well so obviously antibiotic resistance has an impact on the immune system and then genetics as well because it's obviously mutations that cause antibiotic resistance so just some resources that i recommend for your extra reading so the first one is this really good magazine it's called biological sciences review so this is a magazine that's actually designed for A-level biology students. So it's accessible subjects that are understandable. So most school libraries will stock these magazines, um, or you can ask your teacher or 
I think some copies might be available online for free. Yeah, this is a really good resource. Um, and then you have your know, online podcasts. So there's loads of different podcasts on Spotify, um, things like New Scientist Weekly. Um, many of you will have heard of New Scientists. So they do have a podcast, which is good. And then there's, yeah, there's just loads of different podcasts out there. So there's things like Naked Scientists, which is a podcast that I used to enjoy. And then in the middle there, I've got Google Scholar. So Google Scholar is one of the main resources that scientists use to research uh, scientific papers. So scientific papers are kind of outlines of experiments and findings. So I'm going to just insert a recording of me using Google Scholar just to help you through that now. Okay, so I'm just going to take you through how I would use Google Scholar. So I'm going to use an example of a gene technology called CRISPR-Cas9 um, to find some information about that. So this would be cool for any questions asking about DNA. So I'm just going to type in uh, CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing. Um, and you'll have links to loads of different scientific papers and reviews. Um, it's probably best that your information is recent, but just it's not, you know, that important for the essay. Um, so I think let's say let's do this one: advances in therapeutic CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing. So it'll take you to something that looks a bit like this. Um, a really good place to start is the abstract. So the abstract is just a, kind of like a summary of the paper. And then you take some of the information from this. Or you can take information from the introduction, which is, yeah, well, as the name suggests, um, just an introduction to the topic. Or you can use... Um, summary tools online there's loads of them um, but yeah Google Scholar is really good um, you won't be able to access all scientific papers but a lot of them are you know accessible to the public right so now I'm going to go through some examples of well a couple of essay titles and uh, some extra reading content that you could uh, write about. So don't be tempted to use these examples in your exam. Just you know, try to come up with your own. But this one is just inorganic ions include those of sodium, phosphorus and hydrogen. Describe how these and other inorganic ions are used in living organisms. So obviously, well, I'm not going to go through the um, main content, but here I've got about cystic fibrosis because cystic fibrosis affects uh, chloride ion uh, transportation and chloride ions are inorganic. So that's something that's relevant to the question. So obviously it's really important here that you um, make sure it is an A-level standard and it's uh, relevant to the question. So it wouldn't be enough to just to say cystic fibrosis um, is a condition that makes thick sticky mucus because that is kind of like common knowledge it's not really an a-level standard so to make it an a-level standard i've just said it's uh, caused by a mutation i've just written there the most common is f508 de deletion um that's something that i've just looked up so yeah that's the most common mutation if you didn't know and um, the f there means it's a symbol for the amino acid um, phenylalanine. So yeah, the mutation affects that amino acid. And 508 is uh, the position of the amino acid in the protein. So the CFTR protein, which stands for cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator. And then del means deletion. So the most common mutation is a deletion of the 508th phenylalanine residue in the CFTR protein. 
yeah, mutation in the chloride channel CFTR, and it prevents chloride ions from moving across cell membranes through that disrupts water potential. So that includes that uh, transport topic, leading to buildup of thick sticky mucus. Um, and then the last one, so the importance of using DNA in science and technology. So yeah, this is a good one. It can be very, very synoptic if you think about it. Um, a couple of examples here, as I've talked about, CRISPR-Cas9 technology. So this CRISPR-Cas9 is, uh, well, it's the natural mechanism that's actually used by bacteria. But there were two scientists, I think, in 2012-ish, that discovered that this CRISPR-Cas9 can be used for gene editing. So it can, you know, modify DNA sequences and can be used to modify diseases. So it's often still in its early stages, but it has been you know, shown to have some success in the disease sickle cell anemia. And then another example is the 100,000 Genomes Project, which is something that you should look up anyway. It's really cool. So this was a British initiative to sequence and study the role that our genes play in health and disease. And then that's had an impact on personalised treatments. But yeah, that's all I've got to say about the extra reading part. So hopefully this is this has been helpful in understanding that section. And um, as always, if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments. Um, or if you have any requests for videos, please leave them as well. And I'll see you in my next video.